Hello crafty friends, today I'm going to do a quick intuitive piece in my scrappy art journal. I found these really cute leaf napkins in the supermarket today and had to have them. I'm going to use one in my art journal today. I'm just going to see which part of the napkin I want to use and then I'm just going to cut a piece roughly the size of the area that I'm going to stick it down onto. I'm then going to separate the sheets of the napkin so I only have the very top thin layer that I'm going to adhere as my background. I'm going to stick this down with some Mod Podge, you could also use craft glue or gel medium. Now my background pages in my art journal, there's one white and there's one that's a craft color. This doesn't matter to me, I don't mind the different colors, they're going to shine through but I think it creates extra interest. If you wanted to have them both white or a similar background, you could either collage first or just stick a piece of plain paper or a similar cardstock to make it the same. Once I've put down a layer of the Mod Podge, I press my napkin over gently. Try to smooth it out as much as I can. If there's a few bumps and lumps and wrinkles, it really doesn't matter. And then I'm going to add a layer of Mod Podge over the top of the napkin. This will waterproof it and allow me to add additional inks or paints, depending what I'm going to do. At this point, I don't really have a plan. This is going to be quite an intuitive piece. All I knew is that I wanted to use the napkin background. If you'd like to learn how to make one of these art journals to use using scrap paper, I do have a tutorial that I'm going to link in the description box below. Or if you prefer not to make one and want to purchase one, I do also have some ready-made ones in my Etsy shop. That link too will be below in the description box. I'm tearing off the excess of the napkin. The first lot that I tried to tear wasn't working great because the Mod Podge was still a bit damp so I just carried on drying it some more. Now that it's totally dry I'm just going to carry on with the tearing. I do like the rough rustic look. If you like a neater look you can just use the scissors to do the trimming. If you don't have napkins, you could also use tissue paper for this part or even just magazine paper. If there's something in a magazine that you like, maybe a picture, you could use that as your background. To add some interest, I wanted to add some stenciling with my texture paste. So I've got my number stencil and the one that's got like a cursive or vintage script, which I really like. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that now. In hindsight, at the end, you'll notice that most of this actually gets covered because of the placement. But like I said, this was intuitive. I didn't have a plan. So a lot of times you can create something and then things get covered up because you've placed something on top of them, which is always fine. It's always just part of the process and experimenting and trying new things. So I've used my white texture paste and my palette knife, and I've just done a few numbers on the left and on the top right. And now I'm going to do the same with the script stencil. But unfortunately, the texture paste where I did the numbers was not quite dry and there was a bit of smudging. That is my fault for being a little bit impatient with the drying process. And I'm not quite happy with all of this texture paste. And the good thing with texture paste is that while it's wet, you can still work with it. So I've got a baby wipe and I'm just going to clear up some of the areas and wipe off the ones that I don't like and to try and smooth out the other areas that are not looking great. This is a really great thing with mixed media and this kind of work. It doesn't matter if you do make a bit of a mistake or something you're not happy with. You can either work over it or take it off or put something else on top. It's really quite fluid. So don't ever be afraid to try new things or try things that are outside your comfort zone. You'll be amazed at what you can create. And does it really matter if it's not exactly what you wanted? You can always go back at another time and redo over it, paint over it, add something on top. I think just go for it, give it a go. It's all about having fun and expanding your artistic knowledge. I'm now going to add some inks just for a little bit of color contrast and some interest. I'm using the Oxide Ink Spray and I'm using the Color Vintage Photo. I've just put a few droplets over the page and then I've sprayed it with some water with my spray bottle and then I'm also using a wet paintbrush just to try and manipulate the liquidy ink over certain areas just to make it 
spread over now you don't want it to be too controlled you want it to do its own thing so you can lift the book up and down like you know tilt it just to let that ink flow over the grooves and over the wrinkles of the napkin really just let it do its own thing I've also used a small paintbrush that I've dipped into the ink and I've done small splatters over the entire work area one more thing before I start embellishing the page, I'm going to do some stamping again with my script stamp and my black ink. Now I'm going to start the embellishment process. I'm going to do some layered embellishing. I'm going to put lots of different layers for texture. This is one of my favorite things to do. If you did watch my most recent video of altered playing card number 14, you will see a similar effect with just lots and lots of layering and textures. There's no rhyme or reason really to how I add the layers. I sort of just put all different aspects and elements that I like and just move them around until they are pleasing to the eye. Well, to my eye. So it can sometimes take really long to do. Sometimes I can do it the first time I put things down, they work straight away. Other times I can spend up to an hour moving elements around. It really is a personal preference and it's all part of the learning experience and the fun of creating mixed media. Some of the papers and these paper frames that I am using are from Topology. I will put a link to their website below. There's also a discount code if you use my link. The black die cuts that I'm using are dies that are from Coco Rosa Studio. That too, I have a link for and a discount code in my description box below. I'm also going to add bits of fabric. I do love the additional texture that fabric adds. And now if you'll notice, like I said in the beginning of the video, as I'm building up these embellishment stacks, I am covering up the texture paste of numbers that I created originally, which I didn't sort of really notice because I was too busy trying to build my stack i didn't really notice it but that's okay we can always add it on after if we wish to or does it really matter that it's covered it was part of the process Another element that I'm going to use as my focal point is putting a rub-on onto a piece of fabric. These rub-ons are from Topology and I'm going to use this leaf one onto a piece of calico and I think it'll make a great focal point. I feel it needs a bit more white underneath the calico just to make it pop a little bit more. So I'm going to use a piece of cheesecloth to try and sort that out. I'm also adding some thread, just the regular thread you'd use in your sewing machine, just to add some additional texture underneath some of the elements. I'm really loving this green frame and I really want to see if I can incorporate it somewhere into this spread. And then to balance that out, I think we need a frame on the right hand side too. And because I really love these frames, I'm going to use one that side too. I have this larger one that has like numbers on it. It looks sort of like a vintage ruler. So I'm going to see how I'm going to fit that in. But I do like to be, I like it to be balanced. So the right side is obviously more embellished and the embellishments are bigger as the 
compared to the left one which is smaller but I think that balances out well and you don't want it even because then it just I think will look a little bit odd. Once I'm happy with the placement of everything, I'm going to start sticking everything down. For this, I'm going to use a hot glue today because my background has got quite a lot of texturing and I want it to hold quite well. So I'm going to use a combination of hot glue and then some clear craft glue for some other elements. I have an additional die cut. I'm just going to trim a few pieces of it off just to add some additional little bits of black leaves just to balance it out a little bit more. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my mixed media video. I really hope you enjoyed it and were inspired to create your own. Here is a close up so you can see all the details of my page. I would really love if you subscribed to my channel and also don't forget to hit the little bell so you're notified every time I upload new content. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you again soon. Bye.